Welcome to a short video about how to prepare to do effective research using the Oregon Tech Library. My name is Asia and I am an instruction librarian at Oregon Tech. It has been my pleasure to work with online and on-campus Writing 227 students for the past few years. Well, I hope that this video will help get you started on the path of successful research. I won't be able to cover everything, so please don't hesitate to contact me on Blackboard or via email if you have any questions. I want to begin today by talking briefly about the research process, and specifically about the process component. I like to think of research as a type of quest or adventure. If you're familiar with the video game Zelda, imagine yourself as Link. Like any adventure or quest, the research process has its fits and starts. Sometimes you might feel lost or need to circle back to somewhere you were before. This is normal, so don't let it get you down. That said, you can increase your chances of success by preparing a bit up front, which is what we'll be focusing on for the rest of this video. Finally, no great adventurer does it alone, and the same is true for research. So if you find yourself getting stuck or searching for more than 15 or 20 minutes without results, ask for help. As I mentioned before, we will be spending the rest of this video going over some tools that will help ensure that you have a successful research experience. So grab a pencil and a sheet of paper, or open a Word document, and let's get started. Technical writing requires you to answer a specific question. You can begin to focus your topic by trying to form it into a question, your research question. Take a minute to think about your topic. Pause the video and write your research question on the sheet of paper or Word document. Note, this question is designed to help guide your research. So as you find sources for your report, you might decide that the question is too broad or too narrow and need to tweak it slightly. Don't worry, this is part of the process. When I was an undergrad at UC Davis, I directed the Campus Center for the Environment, and I continue to have interest in sustainability. As such, I came up with a research question relevant to my interests. Choosing a topic that interests you is important, as you'll be learning a lot about it in this class. Equally important is ensuring that your research question is reasonable for the amount of time you have in this course. For example, while I find many aspects of solar panels interesting, how they're manufactured, if they can be used on electric cars, etc. I don't have enough time to research and write all about solar panels in the level of detail required for a tech report in a single quarter. For that reason, I limited my question to focus specifically on the installation of solar panels on historic buildings. As you begin your research, look at the questions you have written down and begin to think about whether you might need to clarify or focus them to ensure that they will work for the class. So. Once you have your research question written down, the next step is to translate it into something that a library database might understand. Unlike many web search engines, most library databases do not allow for natural language searching. So as a researcher, you need to do some additional work to access the type of academic sources you'll need for the tech report. The first step in this process is to identify the keywords in your research question. These are the nouns and verbs that make up the core of your question. As you can see, I have underlined installation, solar panels, and historic buildings as my keywords. While I've identified these th three keywords, your question might have different numbers, depending on your topic. Pause the video and take a moment to underline the keywords in your question. Once we have our keyword ident identified, the next step is to begin building a list of synonyms and related terms for each of your keywords. This is an important step because you might be thinking of your topic using one set of vocabulary, but those writing about it or organizing it in the database could be using a whole different set of terms. As you can see here, I've begun to pull up a list of synonyms and related terms for each of my keywords. For example, in the case of solar panels, I have listed a more technical term, photovoltaics, as a synonym. I have also listed some more general terms for historic buildings in case my keyword is too specific. As you begin to think about synonyms and related terms for each of your keywords, you can use your personal knowledge of the topic, dictionaries, thesaurus, and your reading on the topic to begin your list. As you research, you can keep this list with you and add to it based on your readings. Maintaining and updating this list while you research can help to keep track of which terms worked well and which ones didn't, and can also help give you options if your original search terms fail. Pause the video and take some time to come up with one to two synonyms or related terms for each of your keywords. Write these down on your sheet of paper or in your Word document. At this point, you should have a set of keywords from your research question, as well as the beginnings of a list of synonyms and related terms. The next step is putting these together in a way that conveys your meaning to the database. 
This is done using Boolean operators, which give meaning to keywords much like the addition and subtraction symbols give meaning to or change the meaning of numbers in a math equation. As you can see, there are three main Boolean operators, AND, OR, and NOT, that will all work in library databases. You use AND to tell the database you're interested in the overlap or intersection of two concepts, because it only retrieves results that includes both of the terms. A quick rule of thumb is that with Boolean operators, OR means more. When using OR, you will increase your results to anything that mentions either term or both terms. Finally, when you've been searching for a while, you might find that you use, need to use NOT to exclude a certain set of results. This often occurs when a term has two meanings. For example, I might search comics, not comedy, if I'm interested in sources about comic books. Keep these Boolean operators in mind as you search. They are small words, but replacing one with the other can completely change your search results. Another small symbol that might have a big impact on some of your searches is the asterisk or truncation symbol. This is a small time saver that allows you to search multiple endings or spellings simultaneously. Rather than having to conduct multiple searches, you can search for multiple terms at once. For example, child, children, childhood, seen here, with a single search. The truncation symbol works in both library databases and web searches and might help, help save some of you a lot of time. At this point, you should have your keywords, your synonyms and related terms, an understanding of Boolean operators and truncation. So all that's left to do is pull everything together. When you combine the elements of your search, you create a search string, like the one seen here. This one was put together for demonstration purposes only, though, and I would recommend you aim to create something less complicated when you begin your search and add complexity slowly once you have a chance to look at your results. Before getting started, I wanted to go over a couple of aspects of this string, though. First, you can see that I am searching for solar panels or photovoltaics. This is because for the purposes of my research, these terms are synonymous, and I want to retrieve results with either term. I have also limited my search by adding AND between solar panels and historic buildings. That is because I'm interested in the overlap of these two concepts. I don't want to retrieve all the information about solar panels or all the information about historic buildings, only information that talks about both solar panels and historic buildings. Finally, I've used the truncation symbol after install because I want to search all endings, for example, installing, installation, etc., simultaneously. You might be curious about why I've written out my Boolean operators in all caps. While this isn't something that every database requires, some will not understand your search unless the Boolean operators are capitalized, so better safe than sorry. You might have also noted the, the parentheses. I've included these because this search string is so long and convoluted. Similar search strings likely won't need parentheses, but if you can get the sense that your data, the database you're using is not processing your search correctly, parentheses might help it to better understand the order of your search. Pause the video here and see if you can come up with a couple of search strings for your topic. Now that you have your search strings, you're ready to begin searching. Since you're looking for specific information on your topic, I recommend si skipping the main search box and navigating directly to the electronic resources page. Here you will find all of the library's databases listed in alphabetic order. This can be hard to navigate initially, so check out the library's subject guides by clicking on the plus sign next to the Find by Subject heading on the right side of the page. This is a list of databases by subject that might also help you identify which databases might work best for your topic. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. Thanks!